Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to discuss a few topics that will make you wonder what's really going on in the world today. I got this on various sources. Please check the description to know more, there are many interesting topics there, and not all of them can be covered here. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In Brave New World, author Aldous Huxley wrote that the slaves of the future are happy. Drugged and genetically modified, their personalities are blunted, and their bodies and minds configured by a technocracy whose scientists design humans to maximize their outputs for the benefit of the ruling classes. Like the hapless victims of Huxley's dystopia, tomorrow society will be happily enslaved, at least in the minds of WEF planners. Workspaces will blur the lines between personalization and professionalism, feelings of being cheated by the system will be reconceived as consuming less to help the environment, and the pains of reality will be soothed with immersion into joyous incessant virtual reality like Facebook's new meta-concepts. Mega wealth in the global economy is a house of cards. It consists of digits on bank account computer screens that increase when the rich buy and sell repackaged debts to each other. When the gravy train derails every decade or so, the public bails out the perpetrators. Yet, the three main bases on which the intangible economy is constructed are tangible. Precious metals, hydrocarbons, and real estate. In this part of the new world order, constant labor is normalized. From focus zones to work cafes, the space integrates external elements such as co-working and the home office. Happy slaves must also be healthy slaves. Design concepts include an ergonomically supportive home office with limited distractions. There will be a blend of social spaces with productivity enablers, such as colleagues who give unconscious prompts to others to work harder. This will be achieved through the design of the building itself. For instance, computers on which people work might be strategically placed near the coffee machine, so that the idler sees their colleagues laboring and is prompted to return to work. Exercise machines might be placed near the snack bar, so that workers tempted by candy are also guilted into doing a few minutes exercise before returning to their toil. The WEF hopes that once we have been bombarded into the new system, we will all be Huxley and happy slaves in their brave new world, playing with intangible VR toys and mingling with avatars of our loved ones. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. I have a confession to make. I do not believe most of what I hear. That doesn't at all mean I think it is false or untrue, I just don't believe it is true, neither true or untrue, neither fact or fiction. Since all this 2020 chacha began, I have adopted the phrase, consider everything, believe nothing. Which basically means I don't commit to much of anything, but I keep an open mind. This has worked pretty well for me, albeit a bit wishy-washy. I don't really start believing something, unless I have seen some pretty compelling evidence in support of it, or someone I trust says or writes it, or there is so much science behind it, it would be impossible not to believe. Also things that I have experienced directly I tend to believe, but even that can be dicey. Now, I can be pretty sure of some things, or even pretty sure something isn't kosher. But I tend to always keep an open mind, unless something moves into the believed category, or the not believed category. Even then, I can always change my mind. Believable and unbelievable stuff can be found on the sheep side, as well as on the shrew side. 
As you all know, the shrew side can have some pretty scoogly stuff to assess. Don't get me wrong, I love it when people have theories and ideas that contradict the mainstream, even really weird ones. But honestly, can't I save judgment for later? Do I have to say I believe everything to stay in the clubhouse? There is some old bit of wisdom that says, nothing is 100% anything. Meaning that the entire world can't be evil, or the entire government can't be corrupt, or all of medicine cannot be off-base and ineffective. On and on. I think in a broad sense this is probably truer than not. But I do wonder about nuance and detail. Was there a good side to Adolf Hitler? He did like dogs, or so it seemed. How about Stalin? He read a lot, how could anyone who reads a lot be all bad? I sprinkle a little bit of this wisdom into the consideration of strange ideas and theories. Dr. Carl Jung, the eminent Swiss psychiatrist and founder of archetypal depth psychology, said, the true spice of life lies in the tension of the opposites, and probably truth lies there, as well in most cases. This tension is the gray area between two opposing dogmas. I suppose it is dogma that sets me off. I shy away a bit from people who are so rigid they can't even discuss a controversial situation. The same goes for information. So what do we do with all of this? I know, I am afraid often to express even an opinion about a lot of things found in the depths of that rabbit hole. I do not say it is all crap, and I do not say it is all solid truth. I simply do not know. I think every movement consisting of a large group of people has within it many conflicting ideas. That is pretty obvious. I do not think we have to believe and be on board with every one of these ideas in order to consider ourselves devoted to the cause. Personally, I think it is best not to call out things we do not have a positive opinion about unless we are very sure of them. We should allow ideas to breathe and rub our chin about weird ones we don't fully understand at our first encounter with them. But I don't think we have to claim loyalty to everything that comes along within our circle. And at the same time, we should refrain from bashing contradictory ideas that come into the discussion. What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.